right, on to the next match against a guy who transitioned from wrestling to the creative team. I can't really say one way or another if he's a better story writer than a wrestler. Vince McMahon at some point just hamstrung all the people in his company in a damn near constant downward spiral. In uh, the WWF, uh, Road Dog was a hardcore champ, European champ, which was apparently treated like trash, and a six-time tag team champ. So while he was never a main eventer, as far as I can see, he was still pretty damn respectable. Bit of a shame that we can't hear him on the microphone, but even the WWE games that let the characters speak, you don't typically get anywhere near the same kind of energy they would bring to a live event. Eh, now, let's see if I'm shaking off the fatigue I had after the Mankind match we just went through. Well, we're doing a lot of quick attacks, that's gotta be worth something. Though it feels like it's doing his spirit bar more favors than us. Again, no risk of count out, but it doesn't feel like it's gonna do us any good for this one. Right. Of course he decided to counter that bigger move. And that's what I get for trying to be a cheeky bastard and track him back out. Well, at least I didn't fall for the same trick twice in a row. But it doesn't change the fact that I'm just getting pounded here. Come on, I should have been out of range for that drop kick. I'm certainly putting up a fight, but again, I have absolutely no idea if I'm winning or not. I'm essentially just trading blows and hoping for the best, and getting annoyed that he seems to have a psychic ability to predict what I'm gonna do. Not that I'm an especially unpredictable fighter, but still. Is it just me? Or is he fighting better than fucking Stone Cold Steve Austin? The guy who is the absolute top man of the company. And once again, someone feels a great way to attack us is by driving their head into our crotch. Part of me wants to ask if that would be more or less funny if one or both of the people involved were female. It's not really a serious question, I'm just getting tired of seeing us getting hit in the crotch via headbutt instead of something that can't be turned into a porn joke if someone paused at just the right second. Not that his other crowned attack seems to be anything especially serious looking. Am I just taking the fighting in pro wrestling too seriously at the moment, since we're going through a fight here? Or do I actually have a point that some of these moves really should not have existed? Right, so not the best time to come back into the ring. In fact, I just don't feel we're doing well at all in this fight. Road Dog is just making us our... making us his bitch, when The Undertaker is supposed to be the proverbial pink dog. And he will, in fact, refer to himself as the biggest dog in the yard and effectively owns the yard when uh, he gets the biker phase. I mean, The Undertaker here. Yeah. I'm not sure if that was when he had the Limp Biscuit theme song or uh, the other one uh, you're gonna pay. All I know is, this is not looking good for us here. Good God, we've barely damaged him this far into the match, haven't we? Well, at 
least I'm still able to counter occasionally. That's something. And look at that. We're hitting him with old school. Who decided to call that walk on the top rope old school anyway? I certainly know it wasn't done the first few times he ever did it. When did The Undertaker learn he had the balance to do that anyway, and the confidence to do it to other wrestlers who might, for any possible reason, intentional or otherwise, make things harder for him to do so up there? Yes, that is quite the act. I think our spirit broke long before any of our bones here. Yeah, I'm pretty much a punching bag at this point. The counters and offense I've been able to throw has felt like just delaying the inevitable. Have I mentioned that I've never gone through a full road to WrestleMania in this game despite occasionally trying over the years? I just do not have the ability to commit to something like this where you fight so many times over the course of a virtual year with so little reward. And that lack of emotional stamina possibly explains why I've never been able to get through any of the Dark Souls uh, games. Hell, even victory can be pretty damn draining for me around here, and it's not like there's any especially great means to be able to tell how much progress you've made. Oh god, am I actually going to make a comeback here? I certainly wouldn't mind it, but there's only so many times I can pull off a from behind victory. Though I suppose Hulk Hogan and John Cena made that sort of thing seem boring to watch. Well, boring to watch since they did it so often. But it's still interesting to go through when you're the one actually going through the fight. did not go up to 21, that's for sure. Still, getting to the semi-files has to be uh, respectable, doesn't it? So the guy who beat us won it all, even overcoming the top face of the company. Wait, we have another match in the same damn pay-per-view event? And it's against the man we just got beaten by for his tag title. Is this game just not as random as I thought it is? Because I think my bullshit alarm has been going off for a little bit here. Well, at least locking up with him in uh, this match is a good deal easier than the last one, I swear. The difficulty in this game just bounces around way too much and is way too unpredictable for my tastes. If things had been this easy for us in the previous match against this same guy, ugh, there just doesn't seem to be any measurable way to judge just how difficult a given match is going to be in any way. We just enter match after match and some of them are tougher with no explanation. There is no such thing as a difficulty curve here. Spirit power is going up, his is going down. Definitely a good sign for us, though maybe I'm just looking for any scrap of evidence to say we're doing well or poorly. And sometimes that evidence is just a load of bullshit. Come to 
think of it? This is the Brothers of Destruction against the, the less impressive part of D-Generation X. Not that Shawn Michaels is in this game. I think he was out because of his back at this point, though I'm sure he returned in time for the roster uh, in No Mercy. Uh, just something that caught my attention. You need to tell me I'm getting knocked around by X-Pac! I swear, if he does one of those martial arts poses, I'm going to be pissed! Are you kidding me? Does EA just have more forgiving timing for counters? Because that was bullshit! Right, if there was a time to tag someone fresh, this is it. Not that it seems to be doing me much good right now. Apparently, he built too much momentum. I just plain refuse to believe I'm seeing x back completely smacking around Kane of all people. Hell, the K is downright infamous for being one of, if not the most hated wrestlers when he was active. The term x Park Heat literally means where the audience don't just dislike a character because they're a villain. They absolutely despise the very existence of the character and their very presence hurts the product. Now, I understand that after he left the WWE and went to the indie circuit, he gained some measure of respect and apologized for some of the sorts of things that the audience just wanted no part of anymore. From his booking pull to his refusal to evolve beyond the, Dix, the DX persona he had built up and the taunts that went with it. I am in no way saying that he still deserves to be treated like crap, but I'm pretty sure when this game was released, he was starting to get on the nerves of the fans, so it's still relevant. And good god, it has to be such a shame to be so infamously hated among the fans when you weren't even the worst performer in the ring, or anywhere near the worst human being in the company. Hell! Hulk Hogan, in some ways, was worse than X-Pac in terms of refusing to evolve for a long time and making frustrating booking decisions, all meant to make himself look good and kill the momentum of those he worked with. But for some reason, Hogan gets cheers most of the time, even if they aren't always uh, enthusiastic. Right. Apparently Kane is having a hard time at the moment, which is especially annoying because I'm the one controlling him right now. Right. Eh, just right. Nine clips worth of footage for this game, and we're on clip six. We, we're certainly past the halfway point here. Just need to work our way through this, and three more clips. Then I'm moving on to No Mercy. Um, Taker? I know that we have a reason to want to beat up Road Dog, but can you please help against X-Pac? Kane is feeling more like an especially tall gimp than a badass right now. And of course, just as I say the word gimp, the bastard tries to drop right on top of our balls. If we lost due to a roll-up, I would have goddamn screamed. Or at least the closest thing to a scream I can do, given I don't want to absolutely scare the neighbors, and my throat has always had some issues of one kind or another over the years. For fuck's sake, I refuse to lose because of goddamn X-Pac. At least, even as obnoxious as he was, he didn't pull his antics on the upper card, just the mid card. It's amazing just 
Seeing him gyrate like that reminds me of how annoying he was back in the day. And as finishers go, that looked like a very unimpressive alternative of the pedigree. Not really surprising, really, considering how uh, he was good friends with Triple H. That's one of the most believable finishers to kick out of that I have seen in this game, and in wrestling in general, though maybe I haven't seen enough. Hopefully, when I start working on the SmackDown vs. Raw games and use created superstars, I won't make a finisher that looks quite so underwhelming. But that's a long time in the future at this point. Uh, we need to finish working on uh, this game and uh, No Mercy before we start thinking about things like that, and who knows what other games I'll do between them. Anyway, Kane certainly didn't help us all that much here, but I suppose I did enjoy throwing X-Pac around a bit, even if he's not the legal man right now. Wait, did The Undertaker seriously just try to punch his own brother in the gut while Kane was getting knocked around? I know the pair don't always get along, but what the hell? Well, at least it's starting to feel like a fight again, instead of just getting beaten down. Ugh. It's funny how I would appreciate seeing that kind of back and forth in an actual match, but when I'm actually playing the game, I find that especially annoying to deal with. But now I can't help remembering the joke of a tag team match, where Kane and The Undertaker reunited for the sake of taking down MVP and Mr. Kennedy. The younger pair were just absolutely wrecked and beaten down, and they're and that is probably the only time I've heard JBL call a match where I actually enjoyed his commentary. I did enjoy that match itself, even if I didn't think it did anything for the careers of any of the four men involved. It was a fun section of SmackDown, though it kind of made the still-running rivalries of MVP versus Kane and Kennedy versus Undertaker seem just a little dumb. And I seem to recall that both Kennedy and MVP left the WWE for greener pastures, deciding the company wasn't using them especially well, and someone else would do better. Eh, it, it's probably a bit ridiculous for me to talk about a pair of wrestlers that aren't even in this game, and wouldn't be hired by the WWE until John Cena was the very established uh, top man. A completely different era of wrestlers, even if many of the Attitude Era guys were still doing their thing for that damn long. Still, I couldn't help thinking that a match between the Brothers on Destruction and Road Dogg and X-Pac should go pretty much the same way, only without a general manager constantly restarting the match with altered rules so the heels don't get to avoid their ass kicking somehow. Well, at least everyone's holding a body part right now. That's gonna mean I'm doing something right. We just need to finish this thing before these guys finish us. Good thing we didn't need The Undertaker to break that in. At least this training match has the potential championship belt at the end of it. Not that it's gonna be all that much of a reward considering we're probably going to have this much trouble pretty much every time we have to defend it, but still, eh, take what you can get. And apparently, what we won't get is as much help as I'd like, considering this is a match for the goddamn tag team titles. Ah, thank you for helping us out there, x -Pac. If only I could capitalize on that mistake. Not sure if tacking out is the best move, especially since both our team members are pretty worn down by now. Ugh. 
bloody hell. Just let this damn match end. At least he didn't counter that time. Come on, just give me the opportunity to tombstone you, you bastard. <laughs> Guess we're tombstoning both of them. Finally does it! It's just downright amazing how draining a match over 10 minutes feels to me in this game, and I'm sure that will stay an issue when I get to the next wrestling game.